How can the artist play a role in making the invisible visible? How can one see the subtle energies generated by our thoughts and emotions? And if we could see them, what would they look like? This is one of the fundamental questions that visionary artists grapple with, as well as the subject of an investigation by the clairvoyant theosophists Annie Besant and C.W. Leadbetter. According to Theosophy, a religious movement that blends Western occultism with Eastern philosophies, the vibrations produced by thoughts and emotions create distinctive patterns of color and form in the human aura, in the same way that sound creates patterns and forms in matter. These auric, luminous forms are visible only to those who are gifted with a sufficient degree of clairvoyance, or to those who employ methods of entering the visionary realm. In their 1905 book, Thought Forms, Bassan and Leadbetter explored how thoughts and emotions affected their light body. In an act of self-guided psychic synesthesia, their dictations on the subtle matter of the universe were then transformed into unique illustrations by skillful artists. The result was a massively influential map of consciousness and an exploration of the function that abstract art can play in illustrating our thoughts and emotions. So, what governs all thought forms? Bassan and Leadbetter identified three basic principles. Number one, quality of thought determines color. The book opens with a key to the meaning of colors and their relation to certain traits of emotion and thought. Examples include the colors of high spirituality, pure religious feeling, love for humanity, as well as jealousy, deceit, and depression. Number two, nature of thought determines form. When a thought form vibrates with a more specific emotion, a shape begins to manifest. Examples of thought forms that express both quality of thought and nature of thought include vague pure affection, vague religious feeling, and vague intellectual pleasure. Number three, definiteness of thought determines clearness of outline. When a thought or emotion is felt purely and intensely, it enters its highest resolution of expression, taking a clearly defined shape. Examples of defined thought forms include peace and protection, an intellectual conception of cosmic order, sudden fright, explosive anger, and angry jealousy. So in the simplest terms, thought forms are constituted by color, form, and line. To the theosophists, these depictions are not mere metaphors. Rather, they are legitimate transcriptions of energetic manifestations that thought and feelings take in the auric body, with visual art being the most accurate vehicle of expressing them. This revelation, as some occult scholars suggest, marks the germination of abstract art, inspiring the most influential abstract artists of the 20th century. Profoundly impacted by the book Thought Forms and the teachings of Theosophy were the pioneering artists Piet Mondrian, Vasily Kandinsky, and perhaps most importantly, Hilma Af Klint. Piet Mondrian, who joined the Theosophical Society in 1909, said that abstract art is not the creation of another reality, but the true vision of reality. Mondrian's style, which he called neoplasticism, reduced spiritual reality to the simplest formats, using only squares and rectangles, primary colors, and horizontal and vertical lines. This reduction of detail was his way of creating a universality, as he said the first aim in painting should be universal expression. Mondrian referred to each mark in his art as a vibration of energy, which represented what he called absolute truth or absolute beauty. Vasily Kandinsky began his art career creating representational work, but after receiving his first copy of Thought Forms in 1908, his work quickly and dramatically changed from representation to abstraction. Kandinsky often experienced synesthesia, the simultaneous perception of stimuli with more than one of the senses. Kandinsky pushed the synesthetic potential of art and believed music, thought, and emotion could simultaneously be represented through paintings. 
Following a profound experience at the opera, he stated, I saw all my colors and spirit before my eyes. Wild, almost crazy lines were sketched in front of me. This event launched him toward a devotion to make visual art that was a crystallization of music. In Kandinsky's compositions, each color, form, and line has a corresponding sound and emotion. He writes, Color is the keyboard, the eyes are the hammers, the soul is the piano with many strings, the artist is the hand which plays, touching one key or another to cause vibrations in the soul. Perhaps the most significant abstract painter, and often the most overlooked, is the Swedish painter and theosophist Hilma af Klint. Though Mondrian and Kandinsky are often credited as the original pioneers of abstraction, Klint was developing her spiritual abstract work years before, although it was unrecognized by the art world during her lifetime. Clint was a spiritual medium and clairvoyant who attended seances and claimed to have the ability to speak to spirits. In 1905, Clint made contact with a spirit during a seance who told her to begin making pictures of the astral plane. She began a practice of automatic writing and drawing, which led to her revolutionary series, The Paintings for the Temple. She writes, The pictures were painted directly through me, without preliminary drawings and with great power. I had no idea what the pictures would depict and still I worked quickly and surely without changing a single brushstroke. Her iconic paintings are now seen as representations of complex spiritual ideas, bringing the unseen world of spirit onto canvas using abstraction. I'll close with a quote from Vasily Kandinsky. And so the arts are encroaching one upon another, and from this will rise the art that is truly monumental. Every man who steeps himself in the spiritual possibilities of his art is a valuable helper in the building of the spiritual pyramid which will someday reach to heaven. <laughs>